What's going down, everybody? Welcome back to the station. Welcome back to the channel. Y'all know who it is. It's your boy, Ray G. You can find me on Twitter, at Ray GQ. If this is your first time on the channel, thank you. Welcome. I appreciate you being here. Make sure you hit the thumbs up button, like the content, smash the subscribe button. But most importantly, most importantly, engage with the good people below in the comments. This is a dope community. I thank each and every person that has fantasy football commentary and banter in the comments. Thank you. Uh, really, really just appreciate you being here. But look, where we started versus where we're at. Where how it's how it was, how it's going. We're doing that today with the 2021 rookies. Jordan Backus, the director of analytics for Prospect Talk, had a crazy idea. And he said, Ray, let's remock the 2021 rookie draft. Let's go three rounds, super flex, tight end premium, and see how the values of these rookies have changed from the summertime, week one, all the way up through week seven of the NFL season, and there has been substantial change, you know, big time movement, big time change, and we are going to get into that right now. So round one of this, once again, super flex, tight end premium 2021 rookie draft. Let's see what we have at the top of the draft. 101, it's got to be a quarterback, right? Got to be Trevor Lawrence, maybe Mac Jones. No, 101. We get Jamar Chase off of the board, 101, followed by Trevor Lawrence. I was picking at the 103 and took Kyle Pitts over Najee Harris, who went 104. Javonta Williams, the running back of the Denver Broncos, goes 105. And Trey Lance, Trey Lance slides inside that first six, top six pick. Trey Lance goes 106 overall quarterback. For the San Francisco 49ers. Thoughts and takeaways, man. I'm, 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 I'm listening to a lot of people that I look up to in the community talk about Jamar Chase and how good he's been. Best rookie in the 2021 class. Jamar Chase, hands down, run away. Rookie one, wide receiver one, offensive rookie of the year. Jamar Chase, I am sorry for having you as the second ranked wide receiver in the 2021 class. You were number one. I was wrong. I had Devonta Smith one, Jamar Chase two. Both of those guys were tier one wide receiver prospects, if we're, but if we're redoing it today, Jamar Chase is the one-on-one, no, no question about it, in my opinion. You lock up potentially the dynasty wide receiver one right now for the next 10 years, sign me up. Tethered to his quarterback, I was having this conversation with Jared Wackerly, my boy, dynasty nerd, shout out to y'all, but man, I, I don't think we truly appreciated the landing spot of Cincinnati the combination of Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow, I don't think I valued that high enough. And if we have another situation like that, which that I just, I don't foresee that happening anytime soon, um, but I will make sure that I adjust appropriately because you couldn't ask for a better talent combined with another great talent in Joe Burrow. And then the fit, the marriage, like it, it truly may be once in a lifetime type situation where the Heisman winning quarterback, the number one overall pick, gets paired up with his record setting wide receiver from college. Like, we just should have put more value on that. But you see Jamar Chase right here as a 101. Trevor Lawrence at 102. I was listening to my man Matt Cowley talk and saying if we redid Superflex rookie mock drafts right now, he doesn't think Trevor Lawrence would, it'd be questionable, debatable with Trevor Lawrence at 102. And I do think it's debatable because I could easily see a situation, especially in tight end premium, where Kyle Pitts deserves to be selected ahead of Trevor Lawrence. Now, for me personally, even though Jacksonville is a little bit of a dumpster fire, shout out to them for getting a dub. Uh, they, shit, they might win versus Seattle this weekend. Uh, I, I see the talent. Trevor Lawrence has it. He's going to be a top five quarterback in this league. So I have no problem going Trevor Lawrence 102, 103. I, I love Najee Harris. Love you, Najee. I'm not passing Kyle Pitts. We were already bullish on Kyle Pitts last year going into the rookie drafts. I, I'm still there. I mean, I, I honestly would have considered him at 102, potentially even 101 in a tight end premium format. He's incredible. I hope you bought high on Kyle Pitts when you had an opportunity, when I told you to. And hell, at the beginning of the season, I hope you bought low for people who said he wasn't going to make it happen. He's great. Dynasty tight end one right now. Think about this. From the 2021 class, we have arguably uh, the Dynasty wide receiver one, the Dynasty tight end one, a top five Dynasty running back in Najee Harris, and potentially another top five, top eight Dynasty quarterback right now in Trevor Lawrence. Just an incredible wealth of talent in the first half of this 2021 class. Now, 
Javonta Williams at 105. Well, Najee Harris goes off the board at 104. 104. No argument there. I actually think that's a steal uh, to get Najee Harris right there. Fantastic value to get him at the 104. Javonta Williams. I was initially slotted at the 106. I switched it up when I figured out it was linear. I didn't want to pick the back half. I want to pick the good players. I don't want to pick the bad players. But I would have considered Javonta Williams at 106. Uh, I just think it's a matter of when, not if he takes over that Denver backfield. There have been some issues with him in pass protection. Maybe part of the reason why we're not seeing him on the field as much as we want to. But when he's on the field, he looks like damn Marshawn Lynch. So uh, no problem, no qualm with Javonta Williams at 105. 106, Trey Lance. Yeah, I just, I'm not all in on Kyle Shenanigans, man. I'm not all the way there on Kyle Shenanigans, one of the more overrated coaches in the NFL. You talk about all these other coaches on the hot seat. I I don't know what's going on in San Francisco, but it's not good. Trey Lance may not play, but they're showing practice clips. He looks just fine. I don't know what's going on in San Francisco, uh, I still believe in the talent of Trey Lance, but so far, I meant one game sample size. He did it for you on the ground, inconsistent through the air. Don't trust San Francisco. They don't want to play Brandon Ayuk. Doesn't seem like Kyle Shanahan wants to play Trey Lance. I honestly don't know what to do with him in Dynasty. I mean, you have him. You're excited and you're bullish about what he can become. But San Francisco right now just seems like they don't even know what the hell they have in Trey Lance or how they want to operate. He needs to learn to slide. He's got all the talent in the world. So if you're getting the big shift is how far the quarterbacks have fallen. You know, we did we do this. We go back to May, June. Lance, Lawrence, Fields are off the board one, two, three. And in some cases, people were taking Trey Lance as the QB one in rookie drafts. So just shows sort of the value change in these positions. Uh, seven weeks into the NFL season. Now, let's take a look at the back half of the first round. So after Trey Lance at 106, we've got Justin Fields at 107, Mac Jones at 108, Devonta Smith, 109, Zach Wilson, 110, Travis Etienne out for the season with the foot, 111, and Rashad Bateman at 112. So we see the quarterbacks, well, Justin Fields and Trey Lance get pushed back into the back half of the first. Mac Jones makes his rise up into the first. He was consistently going Back late first, early second, uh, we have learned from our mistakes. I don't care if he's a pocket passer. He's one of the best young quarterbacks to come in the NFL in a very long time, per the analytics, per the numbers. Uh, So Mac Jones at 108, absolutely love that value there. Don't know if I would have selected him over Devonta Smith, the Slim Reaper, still coming off of the board as wide receiver too, and I think that's appropriately placed. We talked about Devonta Smith being a lock for 100 targets. Book it, he's going to get that. He's still on pace for over 1,100 receiving yards, over 80 receptions. The issue is right now the Eagles offense, Jalen Hurts, Nick Sirianni, it just does not look good. The Eagles look bad. Do they need to upgrade the quarterback position? Do they need to get a new head coach? Another show for another day. But Devonta Smith off of the board at 109. This is the pick that I hated the most. Zach Wilson at 110, and I get value of the quarterback position in super flex formats. This is why I had Zach Wilson. So I just I, I know he's hurt. He's going to miss multiple weeks. The Jets just look like a dumpster fire. The Jets look bad. Uh, Zach Wilson looks bad. I just don't trust it. I don't trust it long term. Do not trust it long term. So Zach Wilson, Travis Etienne at 111. I don't hate it. The issue is James Robinson is a legitimate NFL back. One of the best running backs in football. What happens with that backfield moving forward? I think and I believe that Urban Meyer is going to continue to be the coach. James Robinson is going to continue to be the lead back. And you see Travis Etienne deployed in a way sort of like Kadarius Toney slash LaVisca Chenault slash Travis Etienne. I don't think I don't think Urban Meyer was BSing when he said he wanted Kadarius Tony. And in limited sample size, we saw how good Kadarius Tony has been. I'm actually shocked he wasn't a first round pick in this mock draft. But I don't Etienne's not going to come in and take over the Bell Cow role in Jacksonville. He's not. Gadget player, Mark Ingram, Alvin Kamara. We like to use those kind of comparisons for two headed backfields. Hell, you could start using AJ Dillon, uh, A.J. Dillon, Aaron Jones, Kareem Hunt, Nick Chubb. I think we're headed more towards that with James Robinson still being the primary ball carrier. And if Jacksonville doesn't want to pay him, he's going to get a bag somewhere else. So Travis Etienne, 111, don't hate it, don't love it. Rashad Bateman at 112 I thought was good value. Some players that we did not see, 
no Jalen Waddle, no Trey Sermon, no Michael Carter, no Kadarius Toney. You know, these are players who were consistently mocked in round one of rookie drafts or drafted in round one. Hell, not even mocked, drafted in round one just a mere, mere weeks ago. Mere weeks ago. Longer than that, but y'all get what I'm saying. So let's dive into the top half of the second round where we saw Kadarius Toney come off of the board at 201. Jalen Waddle, 2-2. Elijah Mitchell at 2-3. Rondell Moore, 2-4. Amon Ra, St. Brown at 2-5, and Kenneth Gainwell at 2-6. The fallout of the first round, Jalen Waddle out of there. Rondell Moore really wasn't a first-round pick unless somebody was really in love with him, but he's right there at 2-4. He's, he's been good this season. He's involved. Uh, had a couple of drops, a couple of plays hit off his hands last night that ended up costing Arizona down the stretch. But I think getting uh, – I love this draft. If you're starting off Najee Harris, Rondell Moore, that's fantastic. Rondell Moore – player that I think you've got a buy low opportunity on because he hasn't been as productive in the past couple of weeks. So get you some Rondell Moore. Listen, I'm not here to toot my own horn, but damn it, I'm a toot it. I said it on the Roto Underworld radio program. Elijah Mitchell will outscore Trey Sermon in 2021. And that permanent, it's coming to fruition. It is coming to fruition. Jalen Waddle at 2-2, what a steal. I mean, what a fall. Uh, would you rather Jalen Waddle or Zach Wilson? I don't know. Uh, probably Jalen Waddle, but the value of the quarterback, I don't know. I, I, I think I would like Kadarius Toney and Jalen Waddle over Zach Wilson. Right? I'm just not buying into Zach Wilson, man. I'm sorry. Amon Ross St. Brown at 205 was a horrendous pick by Brandon. There's no way I would take Amon Ross St. Brown 2-5 uh, if we're redoing this today, especially over a player like Kenneth Gainwell at 2-6. Seen his value bump up a ton. Elijah Mitchell, the biggest riser. Kadarius Toney, almost the first round pick. Loving the value that you're seeing at the top half of the second round of this mock. Now, here's where it starts to get ugly. Elijah Moore, fall. Pat Fryermuth, tight end premium, 208. So we had Elijah Moore, 207. Pat Fryermuth, 208. Terrace Marshall, what a tumble, 29. Some people out there had him as wide receiver, two in the entire, in the entire class. Yeah, no. Michael Carter, told y'all don't buy into all of that. The Jets are a dumpster fire. Michael Carter's just a guy. Deami Brown at 211. I don't know, man. Maybe. Sure. Maybe. Quarterback upgrade. Maybe. Uh, Khalil Herbert. Look at Khalil Herbert at 212. I was I was hoping he would fall back to us, uh, fall back to me in the third round, but this is. This is great value. I'm not good. We see him all over the trade shows. Rashad Bateman, Khalil Herbert, love the start. Uh, Steph Curry starting off very bad at the 111 spot with Travis Etienne and Dayami Brown. But I know you're at the back half. It's linear. You got to take what's best players available, yada, yada, yada. But I think Khalil Herbert, even in tight end premium, I probably, I definitely want him more than Michael Carter, 100%. Give me Khalil Herbert over Michael Carter. Uh, Terrace Marshall, we'll see. Robbie Anderson has been terrible. Give Terrace some burn. Give him some burn. Let him play. Maybe they upgrade the quarterback position and that helps out. I still am a believer in Terrace Marshall, but he has fallen quite a bit from where he was being drafted at in rookie drafts, as has Elijah Moore. And Pat Fryermuth is just waiting, waiting for his opportunity for a quarterback without elbow issues, without everything issues. I don't hate. Pat Fryermuth at 208, especially in tight end premium formats. Don't hate it at all. All right, let's finish it up. Round three. We only did three rounds. The fourth round, there was absolutely no point. It's just, it's gross. 301, Chuba Hubbard. 32, Nico Collins. 33, tight end premium. I took Tommy Trimble. And there goes the aforementioned Trey Sermon at 3 4. What a fall from the back half of a first round pick to the 3 4 because. Uh, he is out of favor with Kyle Shanahan in San Francisco. Trey Sermon at 3-4. Davis Mills, starting quarterback of the Texans for now at 3-5. And Dwayne Eskridge, at, at this point, you're just we're just reaching, grasping for players because the pool is so depleted and so terrible. Dwayne Eskridge, the rookie wide receiver for the Seattle Seahawks, who I don't think he's done anything. Has he even played? I honestly don't know. Uh, Nico Collins, Chuba Hubbard, Tommy Trimble, love him. Love the potential of those guys. You got a starting quarterback, a starting tight end in Tommy Trimble right now. Probably one of the more valuable running backs in, in fantasy football in Chuba Hubbard. 
than Nico Collins, just waiting for a quarterback, waiting for Davis Mills to get him the ball. So there goes the uh, 3-1 through 3-6 of this mock draft, and we will finish it out with the back half, where you see Ramondre Stevenson at 3-7, Jarrett Patterson 3-8, Kyle Trask 3-9, Josh Palmer 3-10, Chris Evans moves up a little bit at 3-11, and Amari Rogers wants a second-round pick because people actually thought he was going to come in and be the wide receiver two on Green Bay. Yes, yes, yes. I am not mistakenly speaking. People thought Amari Rodgers was going to be the wide receiver two for Green Bay. Woof. He falls to 312 in this mock. Uh, this, just looking at it in total, y'all, I mean, this class is was not very good. You had some program changing, some roster changing guys at the top of this draft board. And then you had some good players in the back half of the first round. You know, Mack, Fields, Smith, Bateman. But man, that that second and third round just looks putrid. Now, the question that I ask you all, the question that I want you to think about is moving forward in 2022. And I just put out a 2022 mock draft a week and a half ago. Go back and check out the 2022 mock. Look at the players. Make sure you go to patreon.com forward slash prospect talk. Check out the database. Look at all the numbers that JB is putting together. If you're not sold on Matt Corral, Sam Howell, or Malik Willis, is the real move moving forward in Dynasty rookie drafts, do you forego, do you bypass those quarterbacks and take a talent like a Traylon Burks 101, would you would you take a talent like Drake London over a Sam Howell, over a Malik Willis? I'm just asking. I'm just asking. I understand the value in Superflex is in the quarterback position. But sometimes you want to pick players that are going to score. And sometimes you want to pick players that are the good players to pick, not just the valuable ones at the time. Look how valuable Trey Sermon was in May, in June, in July, in August, when everybody was talking about he was going to be the top dog, he's locked and loaded in RB2 in Dynasty, and he can't even get on the field. You know, the, the, the value changed so quick from May to June on a lot of these players. Kadarius says Tony's value was down here, and now it's up here. Justin Fields saw his value go from here. It's lower. It's a lot lower. Zach Wilson's value, a hell of a lot lower. And we're seeing these wide receivers and running backs just accruing value. Is the move in 2022? If you're not sold on the quarterback class, and a lot of people aren't, a lot of people say, I would take the worst quarterback in 2021, which most people attribute that to Mac Jones, over everybody, every quarterback in 2022. So if that's the case, is the play Traylon Burks, Drake London, Garrett Wilson, Isaiah Spiller, Brees Hall, over Matt Corral, Malik Willis, Sam Howell, Desmond Ritter. Just asking the question, let me know below. I appreciate you being here, checking out the content. Once again, subscribe, 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 all of that good stuff. Make sure you get tapped in. Hey, you can find this podcast anywhere podcasts are streamed at, as well as DynastyLeagueFootball.com. Subscribe over there. appreciate you. We got trade shows, roster rehab, all kinds of dope stuff coming out later on the channel. I'm out of this thing. Peace.